for me, how's it hanging, how's it happen? You guys, notice this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast, the podcast inspiring young rock and metal fans to discover new music, feeling the desire to connect and feel accepted. Welcome to the show once again, everybody. We're in the middle of April, and this episode, I'm going to call it three years in the making. So why is it three years in the making? Best describe it as the last time we had this band, the podcast was in April of 2020. The last time we talked to this band, we were in the middle of a global pandemic, in the middle of a shutdown, and now we're out of it. There's a new album out, and ooh, is this a good one. Before we jump in, though, I want to thank our sponsor's podcast, which is Phoenix Fitness. So you guys know my favorite thing to do is go to concerts and this podcast. When I'm at those concerts, what am I doing? I'm in the mosh pit from the beginning of the show to the end of the show, beginning of the first band and the headliner every bit of the way. So in order to do that, I got to make sure that I am what I like to call mosh pit fit. So what is mosh pit fit? Mosh pit fit is achieving your fitness goals in order to do the things that you want to. For me, it's jump in that mosh pit and last in the whole time. So I got to make sure that I am in the gym and my cardio is up to par on everything over the top of everybody else I can possibly imagine. But I also have to lift a lot too to make sure that, you know, I can deliver those hits because, you know, you got to make sure that you can withstand your own, stand your own ground in there. But also that I can take those hits too because there are some guys in those pits that are a lot bigger than me. I'm looking at you, Nate. Hey, buddy. So I got to make sure that I'm doing all of that to make sure that I can go and do everything I love in those pits. Achieve my fitness goals in the gym every day, all day. But I got to make sure that I'm preparing and recovering right as well to make sure I am achieving those fitness goals and the goal of being mosh pit fit. Yeah. So how do I do that? That's where Phoenix Fitness comes in because they have many different types of supplements to help you achieve your fitness goals, such as pre-workouts, both stim and stim free. I use the stim free stuff because guys, I don't need any extra stimulants in my pre-workout to get me going. I got more than that energy as it is. They also have different types of B cellular recovery compounds that you absorb nutrients in your muscles after a workout. Creatine help you build muscle, different types of protein you build muscle after workout, plant-based protein, collagen-based protein, whey-based protein, use their whey, chalk, and malt flavor, that's my personal favorite, multivitamins, literally anything you might need to, to achieve your fitness goals, Phoenix Fitness has for you. So you guys, the listeners, the viewers on YouTube, you guys can get 20% off using the code CPP20 at fnxfit.com, link to the podcast, get Mosh Pit Fit with us, thank you Phoenix Fitness. Now time for a feature presentation coming all the way from Belgium, an episode three years in the making, Stephen from Suasion is with us today. Are you guys ready? Let's just go to it. Let's go! Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Chord Progression Podcast. This guy right here has been on the podcast before. Back in 2020. I'm talking April of 2020 when the world was shut down and I was not in this room. I was in a tiny little bedroom trying to record this stuff. It is about three years later and we are doing this once again, this band, a cinematic metalcore band with electronic and rock influence, recently came out with their newest album, The Infinite, earlier in 2023. So you can check it out right now. I suggest actually checking it out after you're done watching, listen to this interview because this is going to be a lot of fun. So please, please welcome Steven from the band Suasion to the podcast. So Steven, welcome to Core Progression Podcast once again. Thank you for having me, mate. It's a pleasure to be here again after, yeah, three years. It's crazy, but um, super cool to to be there and to speak to our dear uh, American fans. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's been three years, and the kind of how this whole thing got started too with me, like contacting you guys and get, trying to get you guys get back on, was because one guy I listened, uh, end up talking with a lot. Uh, him and I have a lot of contact. His name is Julian. He ended up like saying, "Hey, man, check out this band. I really like their new record. You should check it out." And he sent me the infant. I'm like wait a minute, I've interviewed these guys. I listen, I'm like, wait a minute, now I want to interview these guys again. And <laughs> yeah. Here Crazy. we are. Super cool, super cool. Thanks to him. <laughs> yep, so you definitely do have American fans, but first things first, man, how has everything been going? Because it has been three years. You have a brand new record out right now. How has life been for you and how has life been for the band? I mean, it's been crazy, actually. Of course, uh, d- uh, when the pandemic hit uh, Belgium, as uh, as every, everywhere was in the world, it was kind of hard because we, we had to completely change our strategy. So last time we talked, we just released our first album, which was called Stardust, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, we were like in the rush. We were really motivated to, to, to spread it all around the world, you know, and to tour and to, to finally meet the fans and all. We, we worked like crazy for this album as well. And then, yeah, the, the pandemic came and then we... So yeah, we had a huge tour planned with Landmarks and Novelist. We, we were supposed to, to tour all across Europe and the UK. So it was really like, we, we had the, 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 the feeling that we finally made it somehow, you know, we were getting somewhere finally after all these years and all this work. 
and we had to completely cancel it due to the pandemic. And sadly, we we weren't able to to reprogram it uh, later. So we we had to we had to to step down at some point and say, okay, what are we doing now? You know, because yeah. uh, we can't tour, we can't promote it the way we we, we would it to we would like to promote it. So so we we just discussed it uh, amongst ourselves and we said, okay, let's let's try to write new songs and to 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 create new stuff again and to to get back at it you know but it, it's gonna be hard because yeah the motivation was like yeah. getting back in the studio you know uh, we want some fun at some point you know because the the stage is like the, the best thing a musician can do of course and uh, so yeah it was it was kind of a hard blow but um yeah we, we so we made the two first songs of the album which were uh, murphy's law and infinite and uh, after that we got signed to the the label atomic fire records so this is the the label of bands like Meshuga, uh, Amorphis. Uh, they also have Halloween stuff like that. So it's pretty cool for us. It was a uh, really cool to work with a bunch of professional mm-hmm. guys. And after that, so we really like dive deeper into the, the process of making the album. So we yeah we made like seven music videos. I think we traveled to the Azores Islands to to make like the best music videos we ever made uh, for House of Cards. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was like really a crazy, a crazy ride, man. And uh, and yeah, recently, so yeah, two months, uh, two months from now, I think we released the album, and we we organized a super cool uh, released show in our hometown, and it was like the perfect party. So we are we are really uh, super happy about it. Yeah. So that's what's been going on so far. <laughs> that's like the three minute version of what has been happening with Suasion since we last talked to him again back in April of 2020, which is astounding to think about. And again, just recap that. Take a look at where they've been. I mean, they've signed with Atomic Fire Records. They've released The Infinite. They've made seven music videos. They're working with, you know, a full on professional crew when it comes to uh, a record label when it comes to producing music making music and especially with your more cinematic style with those electronic influences in there that's something that can really only help for the positive because now you have the resources backing you to really bring out that sound in a way that if maybe you were independent or maybe you know early on back in 2019 you guys were making startups maybe you didn't have the capacity to put that out there in a, or create that sound a certain way that you are able to now so that when in the infinite came out and people were listening to it all of those pieces really co- come out and stand together. So when that release show happened, I'm pretty sure, you know, the place had to be packed. The place had to be jumping. And after listening to a couple of these songs, my first thought was that pit had to be going off. And why the hell was I not there? <laughs> yeah, because you, because it was in Belgium, sadly. But uh, funny thing is that, yeah, the, uh, the core of our fan, fan base, because you, you see on Spotify, we can see the stats and where uh, where the, the, the most people are listening to your, our, our music, you know. And so the most people, it's actually the US. Uh, so this, and there's like a tremendous difference. Like, I think one third of our fan base is located in the US. So uh, I think we, <laughs> it, that means something, you know. So, uh, of course, if we could play in the U.S., I think the the the, the reception will be different um, as in Europe. I, I'm sure, but of course, the, the show was pretty cool. It was clearly packed. It was a good audience, really receptive. Of course, uh, since it was in our hometown, you know. <laughs> but still, in Belgium, it's really complicated for a band like us to find our place and to find some regular shows, you know, because it's really not the style which is like, uh, yeah, it's not the, the promoted style. I would say so. It, it's hard to to find something interesting interesting for us here. So, yeah. I do remember talking about that with you on the previous time we did this back in 2020, yeah. where when it came to the, you know, the Belgian music scene, especially maybe around Belgian culture, where the style of music that you're working, especially more the heavier sound, bringing up for that cinematic, the electronic pieces in rock and metalcore, it wasn't something that was being as closely connected to the fans. So maybe when I remember talking about like, you know, it sucks that at that time, you guys couldn't get out to like put your, take your music and show it to the rest of the world in a live setting, like take it to the UK, take it to Germany, take it to Central and Eastern Europe, where maybe some more of the stuff has much more of a prominence and much more of a power base to really connect with. But now with, you know, it's 2023, the infinite is out. It's a brand new record, but you guys have now the ability to go and do something like this. So as a hometown release show, yeah, it's going to be packed and be jumped because people are connecting to you based on the fact that you mm-hmm. are from there, that you are, it seems like, you know, this is a band that is from here. This band is part of us. So we want to promote this and help this out. But when it comes to really connecting with that fan base, you know, you're going to have to potentially look at other places as the Spotify numbers and the Spotify metrics show. So 
Have you guys been able to take this stuff out on the road beyond Belgium and throughout the rest of Europe? So yeah, we we started working with a booking agency as well. So uh, it's called Rage Tour. It's a it's a huge booking agency based in France. So we are actively working on a huge tour for this fall. So it will be all across Europe. So this uh, this will be really cool, and uh, this will feel like really a huge relief for us. <laughs> and uh, we are also working on on a small tour in, in the UK. But uh, yeah, this is really our top priority now. It's to play shows. And uh, yeah, in Germany, as you said, yeah. Eastern Europe, because this is really, you, you're completely right. This is the place we have to play because this is where our style will, will have the better response, I think. And uh, it's obviously too soon for the US, sadly, because uh, yeah, as I said, this is, this is where it happens for us. But uh, uh, first, we really want to, to aim at Germany, the UK, so even Holland, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and France, of course, this is, we also have good numbers there. Uh, so yeah, we have to, uh, in, in fact, Belgium is too small. So, uh, in the end you, you, you like forced to, to leave it somehow, you know? <laughs> so yeah, this is really uh, what we are working on right now and on other side projects as well. But, uh, the, the, the priority is really the shows. Yeah. See, that's something I'm happy to hear about too. And when it comes to the numbers, well, like you said, one third of those listeners, when you look at those metrics are from the U S but that means two thirds of those listeners are from somewhere else that's not the U.S. So you're probably getting some listeners in Australia and over in the you know the southeastern part of the world over there when you look at a world map. But when you talk about Europe as well, you might have you know maybe half of the people that are in in your fan base that are currently in Europe. It's just what country are they and where are they located? Because the U.S. is one big place, but you know you have these different regions, these different pockets. So you're gonna have to play along with that. With Europe, it's you know you have the different regions, different pockets, but they're broken up by all these different little countries instead of here in the U.S. These different states or these different smaller regions. So you guys, are, you know, starting out with the Europe side of things, of course, it's gonna be the logical place to go, especially when it comes to transportation costs. It's a lot easier to travel Europe when you're starting out in Belgium than if you're starting out over here in the United States, you gotta fly all your gear over there. However, I know you guys wanna get to that point where you're flying all your gear over to here in the US to play a bunch of shows, rip through a bunch of crazy stuff and make America fall in love with Suasion along with make the rest (laughs) of Europe fall in love with Suasion. That's what I wanna see, that's what I'm hoping for. And I'm glad that's in the works right now because Man, with this style, with this, it's, it's, I always think about that cinematic style. It's epic. It's grand. It's something that people can really get behind because it feels like when you're listening to the if and when it feels like when you're listening to even Stardust from 2019, just listening to the music of Suasion, it feels like you're in this epic movie. And it's just, it stands out so much heavier at that point in time. Yeah, you really, you really uh, catch the, the, the vibe we wanted to share here. It's really like, uh, in fact, especially for this album, we, we already like try to approach this like cinematic vibe with Stardust, but we were like, we were not sure about it. You know, we made some tests, you know, but here for the infinite, it's completely assumed, you know, we, we really wanted to have this, this complete uh, cinematic musical project, you know? So in fact, we released uh, in the same time of the album, we released like a movie part of the album, you know, a movie side. Mm. So you can just connect to YouTube and you have like the all the music videos for every song. We have a video for every song and it's like a 50 minutes movie, you know? So you have the, the, the sci- a sci-fi movie, which is linked to the album. And so this is what I mean. We, we really wanted to create a full story and every song is like a chapter in this story, you know, and it communicates all kinds of emotion like, like a movie. So we were f- completely inspired by movies like Interstellar, like D- Dune more recently, you know. And so, yeah, we have this crazy, uh, crazy story of us uh, traveling through space in the search of uh, a, a, um, a mysterious source of energy, which is called the infinite, in fact. And we, we managed to find it, but uh, we, then we have a problem when we want to go back to Earth. We end up in the wrong place, you know. And so, yeah, this is, this is and, and all the stories actually ends when we are on stage, actually. So the, 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 the performance on stage is actually the last chapter of the story uh, we, we, we tell with the album. Oh my God. Okay. Now I'm definitely have to go back and watch all these different videos and try and watch this movie from start to finish because that yeah. I knew there was some kind of concept behind here and I was going to ask about that, but you kind of just took it and ran with it. And when, you're <laughs> mentioning, and when you're watching movies that, you know, kind of had that inspiration behind there, right when you said interstellar, my mind popped up. I'm like, that's it. Like <laughs> as the movie that's like, you know, where does this all come from and where could this soundtrack absolutely fit on? As like or this song, this or this album kind of create a soundtrack for a certain movie. Interstellar was the one that's like I couldn't put my finger on it, couldn't put my mind on it. I'm like, I know it's there, I know I've seen it before, but which one is it? You said it, boom, 
hit absolutely. Because especially, I mean, you open up with Astro, then go to Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law is the one where it's just like, okay, it kind of brings forward, especially right from the beginning, from the get-go. It brings forward more of that sci-fi feel, more of that sci-fi story concept of maybe searching for something that's out there, have you more maybe like a cyberpunk kind of feel to it at the same time to really then flow into more of this cinematic metalcore style fully in there and a melodic chorus that just really takes you in a different direction. But it's that like, it's that dip that's needed so the song doesn't sound like it's so straightforward and one long run on sentence. It's like, it, it makes it a lot more dynamic is the best way to put it. Yeah, clearly, that's what I really like about this album. It's, it's just that it's not one style, you know. You have a, comp a large panel of different style of songs. So, like, yeah, Murphy's Law, it's kind of, it's kind of an answer to the pandemic. So, it's really brutal. It's kind of, it, it kind of has a, a, do you know the, the video games Doom? Yeah. Yeah, so it's really like Doomish in terms of, like, you know, the, the first riff in the guitar. It's really heavy and it sounds like a, a Doom introduction, you know. <laughs> so... Uh, so it's pretty heavy, and then you have like uh, you have like uh, Mo momentum, which is a song which is more like a stadium vibe, you know, with an anthem, like everyone could sing, you know. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you have uh, infinite and explore, which are more in the stardust vibe, my opinion. And uh, you, you have celestial, which is a ballad. You have uh, and and you have uh, equilibrium, which is more which is heavier, you know, which is more metalcore and uh, also with kind of a spooky uh, vibe. Mm -hmm. So. You, you 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 can't get bored really because it's not always the same sound mm -hmm. it's, it's never the same the, the, the same uh, synthesizer it's never the same vibe so that that's what i like about it and and uh, and with this principle actually we can communicate a lot of emotions and it's really important for me as well with the lyrics i also want to communicate a lot of emotions like in a movie really so it's 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 the point of it you know yeah it's absolutely the point of it and i do like what you said too when it came to creating this album that, you know, it's not going to be the same style over and over and over again, especially with the way you guys are able to create and really work off of that cinematic influence. It allows you guys to take and test so many different things because you do have those songs that have more of that faster pace driving for sale that feel like they're more chaotic, like Murphy's Law and like my probably my favorite other tra track on the album, which was Trapped. But then you get those other ones like Momentum, which it's definitely not going to be as chaotic. It's going to be more of a flowing kind of song that everyone can really get into and vibe with. And then you have some songs in there as well that really kind of bring the energy down at the same time to really flow through that story. But again, you're telling a story through this. You're going through the emotion. But I do want to point this out too, because I was I kind of had an idea again that there was an influence of a story, maybe a concept behind this. But I went through the whole entire album not thinking about that. I wanted to look at each song specifically and see if the album could still flow when I didn't even have that story in mind. And, yup, it did. Yeah, that's also something I want to do. Like, I, I don't like a song or, uh, or lyrics when you, you're too precise about the things, you know? And that's what, that's what a huge thing, a, a, a huge uh, fear I had when we decided to do this movie concept with a, a clear story uh, with the album, you know? Because I said, maybe the lyrics will be too aimed and I will give too much detail of the situation. And so, like, a random listener wouldn't be able to recognize himself in the lyrics, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not what I want to do when I write lyrics. So I, I stay, like vague you know like in the limits so you when you see the music video you can see oh, okay he's saying this because because yeah like us of cards is speaking about the mission it's uh, okay it's it's linked to that you know but you can listen to it like even if you don't have the concept in mind you know you can it can help you it can make you feel better you know so th that's really what i want to do with my with my songs that's what i want to do since the beginning of, of suasion and i will continue to do it and i'm kind of proud of it because i for, for this album because I, I managed to do this uh this mix between the story and still uh, having the, the lyrics like neutral you know absolutely and this I'm, is I'm glad you noticed it <laughs> yeah and i gotta bring this up too because i literally just talked about this on a previous podcast which is just astounding recently talked to this guy uh, andrew the lead singer of the band project 86 because their new album omni is a concept album that kind of takes more of this dystopian uh futuristic sci-fi story in itself as well and we were talking about cons like albums that have that larger story behind them that tell that whole story from start to finish that have a concept behind them and how so many bands potentially fall into a pitfall like you just said when you're writing lyrics when you're trying to go through it, that sometimes bands get so focused in on where the story is going they get way 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 too specific on that 
and it ends up hampering the music's overall longevity because people are not necessarily connecting with it unless they're consuming that song or that music in a very specific way in a specific order. But if you're able to really take the sounds that you're trying to put out there and match them to enhance what the story is going for, and then from the lyrical standpoint, make it meta, make it metaphorical enough to the point where it is not so specific to the story where people can still relate if they watch you know the music videos they can pick up on the story and easily flow through it but if they're not like what i was doing with this one i can pick up on so many of these other themes that maybe when you're talking about the story the themes of that part of the story are present but i'm relating to something different but the lyrics are not vague too vague either to the point where i'm completely lost in what's going on no because every time i was going through these songs i mean i always figure out first what do i think the meaning of the song is and there are a lot of pieces that still flow in with that story but it's just me taking it in a completely different nature from where that core idea came from and then branching off there and putting it from my aspect more in a realistic standpoint of what i've been experiencing currently or recently in the past yeah you, you completely nailed it man uh, it's, it's it's really that so so even if you're looking like a, a music video for example trapped you know mm -hmm. uh you 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 don't have the concept in mind. You look at the music video. You say, "Oh, okay, it's it's a pretty cool music video, and the song is dynamic. He's talking about yeah, being trapped. So it it could be like COVID related. It could be like in my in my job, in a relationship, you know, in something like that. I'm trapped, you know, and I don't know what to do. And uh, you have to run or you have to do something, but uh, don't stay there, you know. But it's also matched with the fact that we are chased by aliens in the movie's music video, you know. So yeah. it's uh, it's just like that. But uh, yeah, I don't want to be too precise and I don't want to talk about certain topics also in my lyrics, like politics, like, uh, and I, I, I and you, you choose the perfect world. It's like being metaphorical enough, you know, uh, so it can like touch every, pe every people. Mm -hmm. we, we have like a, a music style, which is so limited already, you know, you can't, you can't uh, reach to a large amount of people you know mm. not large enough of course if you if you start talking about like really precise topic you even reduce this amount of people you can reach so and i, and I don't want to do that mm. now no and i'll go back to trapped as well because you have definitely did not do that looking back at trapped when you're talking about the story you know you guys being chased by aliens and that it's there's definitely it's there's a force that's preventing you in that story from achieving a certain goal or achieving a certain amount of success that is trying to get you to stop doing that. And when it comes to maybe more of the grander theme of the story, again, it's something that's preventing you from achieving your own. From my standpoint, I took a look at it from a little bit more of a life standpoint. And that's what I got out of it, you know, taking, a, I, but I went a little bit more political sociological with that thinking, you know, taking a look at society in general and seeing it as a way where in times through society, through culture, we're pressured to adapt to a certain mindset and conform what that society wants us to potentially be or be outcasted by it. So we feel like we're trapped. But then we, I think about too, the people that succeed massively in life are the ones that break out from that. We feel trapped when we try and break from that mindset. We feel trapped and chased down, but it's all about breaking through that trap continuously and succeeding to the point where we make it out as successful as we can as ourselves. So again, from my standpoint, I went with more of this holistic, societal, sociological kind yeah. of idea. You, it has more of that story behind there. But when we think about being trapped, that is the core, like the absolute core of the song from the meaning standpoint, from the emotion standpoint. Mm -hmm. So we're able to, as listeners, get into that from the metaphor side and then put it in our brains and then relate yeah. to it however we see fit. Yeah, you just take like the 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 code. You uh, you integrate the code in your machine, and then comes the result you want. That's uh, that's all. Yeah. And since you you manage to give it your your own interpretations, for me it's a sign that it's kind of well done. Because for me it's a, it, it's a different signification, but it's yeah, it works. So it, it's perfect for me. It's, if if more the the, the if uh, more different people can can relate to the lyrics, then I I, I can say I did a I did a good job in the end. Yeah, you can say you did a good job on top of that too. Then when it comes to the whole entire instrumental backing behind it as well to really create that emotion because that's another huge piece that's going to create the emotion and create the flow of it. Again, having more of that chaotic kind of cyberpunk feel to that cinematic style that you guys are working with on this song, it gave that at feeling of, you know, you're trapped or potentially being chased down by something. So when in the video you guys are being chased by aliens, yeah. That makes total sense. You're thinking about people potentially trying to suppress you and pe keep you trapped. It gives you more of that chaotic, I got to get out of here feel, and I got to find yeah. a way to break free. Fits the exact same way. 
Yeah, the, 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 uh, so, so for, for all the synthesizer in the electronics, uh, it's, it's, the, it's Julien and Nicolas part. So Julien is the guitar, guitar player, mixer. Uh, he did the mastering as well. And Julien is like the producer of the music videos and also uh, he's, doing, he's doing a lot of sounds and all. And they did a tremendous work with, the, with, all, the, with all the songs, actually. But on Trapped, I think they, they, they really surpassed themselves on, on that one. We, we really had fun for, for, for this song, especially because we were like, ah, oh, maybe it's a bit too much, you know, like with EDM and stuff. No, nah, let's do this, you know, let's have fun. Let's, uh, let's do something different for, for a change, you know. We, we want people to dance like, you no, know, you are to a metal co show, you have people dancing on an EDM uh, break, and then uh, uh, suddenly it's, it, it became a metal, it, it becomes a metal co breakdown and stuff. We wanted something crazy, unpredictable, you know. And uh, yeah, it's in, and I can feel we, we really had fun. And actually, when we play our show and we presented the whole album, this song had, had a really pleasant effect because it was really nice. Some people, were, they, they just didn't know what to do, you know? <laughs> they were like, okay, should I dance? Should I, uh, should I like, act crazy? I don't know, but uh, it worked perfectly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I've been thinking about that too now. It makes so much sense, especially from a live setting. I've seen bands that have done that where they've put more of that EDM sound maybe into some of their songs and in the pit, we get down and we kind of dance and we have a really ridiculous time. But then all of a sudden when it gets heavier and a potential breakdown hits out of nowhere, we go from just dancing, having fun, being goofs to going back mm -hmm. and moshing and hitting each other once again. And it's that kind of unpredictability, especially at a show, which makes it so much more fun. But again, it has to all tie back in the song, to all tie back, I mean, all tie back in to make sure everything sounds cohesive, which on this one, it absolutely does. I'm thinking about, you know, be going to potentially see, uh, well, I will get to see this later on this year, but see an electric cowboy play their shows because they have you know, uh, yeah. songs that they're just so much fun. You're going to want to dance in the pit and have a good time. But then everything mm -hmm. just gets heavy out of nowhere and people are going to start, you know, kicking the shit out of each other because I that's just what we do. And at the end of it, everyone's just enjoying it, having a blast. The energy level is absolutely high. Mm -hmm. So in a song like this, you absolutely hit on it. And much more of a cinematic kind of version, too, just because the way the synths come out, the way the electronic production comes out, it brings so much more of a grander style to the music. And that's prevalent throughout the whole entire album. Yeah, actually, actually, a German magazine wrote that we were like the, a serious version of Electric Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I was kind of kind of flattered. Yeah, and and I'm going to see them in live in Luxembourg next month. Actually, I'm a huge fan of them. Yeah, it's a, it's really great. <laughs> Already. But, uh, yeah, but I really like the, the the fact that it's actually uh, fun, you know, and the, the music videos they, they are like all over the place, you know. It's a, uh, it's also unpredictable as you said, and it's fun and it's fresh and uh, yeah, I really I really like it as well. Yeah. And, uh, all right, you got to take. Into it. <laughs> also, you got to take me through your mindset, man. When you saw a magazine call you guys a more serious version of Electric Callboy, what went through your mind when you saw that? Because that is an insanely awesome little blurb to put in a magazine, and as a compliment, wow. Yeah, I said, yeah, actually, we, we just looked at each other and we say, yeah, actually, that's it, it could be that, you know, because we, we, we use a lot of EDM as well. You have also that kind of dancing vibe uh, mm. like them, but we don't use the pop, pa -da -da -da, the pop, 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 stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and the music videos, they are, yeah, they are, they have a serious uh, vibe, of course. So, uh, we couldn't say we are not like dressed like in the 80s, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not like. Uh, <laughs> 60s even i don't know but uh yeah so yeah but it's 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 pretty cool that it, uh, at least it's um it, it's uh it's an atypical advice and uh, it's super cool to read you know for a band uh, to be compared to such such band now because I, I think this is actually one of the the band which is which is working the most i think uh, with badoman so i prevail i don't know but i think they i think they're the top three bands right now will bring me the horizon of course but it's uh it's kind of crazy for us yeah yeah, I'd say maybe you the know, top. We're just a small band from Belgium, so. <laughs> yeah, I would say maybe the top five right now would be in terms of like just influence, in terms of how big. I would put Bring Me the Horizon up there. I'd put Bad Omens up there for sure after what they did in 2022. I put Electric Callboy up there because they're bringing so much fun back to the genre. I would actually drop I Prevail out there and put Spirit Box in there instead. And then my fifth mm -hmm. one would be, especially with how it's going right now in 2023, is Sleep Token. Like, yeah, yeah. but like kind of having you guys compared to 
electric cowboy in that manner what it'll what it does is like now i'm thinking about this okay if i like electric cowboy and i like kind of just the more fun side if i'm thinking a more serious version what could that possibly mean what could that possibly be and then you go and listen to music and getting more people to check check it out it's like okay i see where that electric cowboy feel comes in where you know there's different parts to it there's more of the dance side and there's more of the heavier side to it but Again, instead of kind of having more of just like this goofy, carefree, there's more of this cinematic, grander nature to it. So mm -hmm. it stands out as something that is completely on its own. But when you feel like, you know, the they see the live shows, people are reacting very similar in terms of how the pit's doing, how the people are banging their heads, people are dancing around there. Mm -hmm. So can we get you guys to go on tour with Electric Cowboy and say, all of a sudden, we're the more serious version of this. Now get ready to go and have some fun with da 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 da. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh man, this, this song is is driving me crazy, really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 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 a tour with them would be would be great. But to be honest, I I, I would think we're closer to Star Set in terms of style. Oh. But, uh, but uh, yeah, we we've all the space stuff. I know the space team and the electronics. But uh, some, not all the songs actually are really like the Soyuz version of Electric Callboy. It's more trapped, maybe Murphy's Law, but we we are not going really 100% in that direction. You know, if, if we uh, if we made an album like uh, every song is like trapped, I would say yeah, okay, we are really like uh, a serious version of of them. But we don't want to do that as well because, as I told you, we want to have a really different uh, al an album composed of very different songs in the end. So. Uh, this is not something we want to do, like yeah. having uh, just one direction yeah. uh, and uh, full EDM and stuff. No, All right, I don't me, think in the future work it will be the case too. I'll say, let me retract this and kind of bring this back to maybe where I should have brought this. Because when you brought up Star Set, it basically clicked something in my brain. So when it comes <laughs> to Star Set, because I got to see Star Set, uh, they did like it was a t in 2022, they did a full entire, like, it was kind of like that cinematic experience full light show and everything they played for like an hour and they were an opener too they were they opened for mudbane so of course the fans were like we, we were all in the crowd like all amped up ready to go and kick the shit out of each other during some mudbane star set goes on no one moshed no one did anything because we were all so captivated by what was going on on stage so we didn't want to miss out and it. it was absolutely awesome but taking a look at kind of your style it's you know, I see where the whole entire connection with Star Set could come in when you bring more of that cinematic, that electronic, the space kind of feel to it as well. It's grander. It absolutely can call for that kind of style as well. But I do want to also bring, bring in that serious kind of feel like your cowboy in terms of mixing that feel of, you know, can dance and you can mosh, you can have us a crazy, ridiculous time all in one. But continuing on, just continue to do what you guys are doing because you don't want to be a carbon copy or more serious version of one or the other. It's a great compliment, but it's going to continue to, it's the compliment's going to wear off if you just solely stick within that. If you guys continue on this path of doing the things that you want to do, creating the music that you want to create, all of a sudden it's going to be something where you can go tour easily with both of those bands. Star Set comes over to Europe. You could get that opening slot touring through Europe with them and the fans will absolutely go crazy for it. Electric Callboy does another run through Europe as well. Suasion gets put on the bill, and people will get into it based on, again, they know what they're expecting from Electric Callboy. They see you guys. It's like, okay, this is the cinematic, the grandeur, the more electronic, the spacey feel to it. This is fantastic, and I love the fact they can also you know, have those songs where I can dance to it, and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm moshing literally five seconds later because they went for more of this trappy style, like with Murphy's Law, all of a sudden into this nasty breakdown that comes out of nowhere where, yep, I was dancing with the person next to me, and now I threw my shoulder into him because it is fun. <laughs> yeah, we, we, I, we'll keep on doing that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but it, it's strange because the the reviews we received for the album, they, no one is saying the same thing, you know, because like everyone is captivated by one song or another, you know, and so the the the. Yeah, the, the, the reviews are like really mixed, you know, everyone is like, oh, there is too much electronics, I don't know, I'm more into old school metal, you know, and people sometimes say, oh my, my god, this is a revolutionary, I don't know, <laughs> and sometimes like, oh, I like that one, or oh, sometimes, oh, it's too, you know, it's, it's, it's just normal, it's just mm -hmm. like meh, you know, so yeah, we, we never had the same one, which is like, uh, no one is like, is um, appreciating all the songs, because they're too different, mm -hmm. of course, it's a, it's a choice we made. 
but uh, yeah, overall, of course, we we are really pleased with the results. That's not it's not that, but it's quite interesting, and it shows mm -hmm. that. Uh, it's hard to content everyone, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's going to be anything in the world, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, whatever you're working towards, whether it's a job, whether it's just you trying to, you know, make everybody happy. The, the reality of the situation is, and this goes for everything in the world, you're not going to please everybody. You can try and please everybody, but I can guarantee you it's not going to happen. So mm -hmm. you guys creating the music that you wanted to, creating the songs that you wanted to, making it a whole entire story, making it a cohesive unit, but also these songs that can stand on their own. On top of that, having different sounds there, yeah, they're, you're gonna get reviews where people are gonna be like, "Oh yeah, I really like the, you know this song for like for myself. I really like Murphy's Law, and I really like Trap because they're heavier, they're a little more chaotic. They have this feel to them that I really connect with. Some of the slower ones, some of the more melodic ones, I'm a little bit more like, you know what? I'd prefer you know Murphy's Law and Trap or those. But again, that's based on my taste and my style. But with those mixed reviews, it's coming not mixed in terms of people liking and people disliking it for the same reasons. It's people liking it because there's something on there that attracts them based on the style of music that they like. Or they're disliking it because it's of their own personal taste. It's not really something on the quality is good or bad. It's just in those reviews, people are giving you their opinion based off of what they like. So like, again, for myself, I like the heavier, harder, sometimes the more punk, chaotic stuff. So I'm going to gravitate more towards that, which is why we talked about Trap for like, you know, eight, nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i know you're right yeah but it's just, it was just funny you know to to have such a such a variety in the in the comments and the in the reviews and the uh or having like every time a different song which is like um titled as the best of the album you know so it was kind of cool yeah so it's it shows like somehow every song is potential and uh so yeah uh, we can uh i think it's 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 quite positive in the end, even if the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the global result is not always good. In the end, but I was thinking about this, Stephen. It also shows this in a certain way. What it also shows is because when people are reviewing it again, they're coming from different musical tastes, different musical backgrounds, where their favorite genre, their favorite kind of music, are the pieces of music and the sounds that get them up in the morning, get them all jazz, get them excited as all hell to go maybe. You know, in in the going to go to a date or go to a go to a middle of a mosh pit or just you know whatever they're pumping up, you know, getting ready to lift or whatnot, whatever it might be, whatever gets them going <laughs> in the morning and gets them going at night. That's what they're gonna end up thinking about when they're listening to your music. So when they're ever people are like, oh, I like this song, but I like this song, and there's so many different people that are looking at this album, reviewing it, and liking so many different aspects of it, and it's that wide variety of it. It allows the band to be able to penetrate different audiences and really get a foothold in there because, again, the cinematic style of it, there's a grander feel to it, but the electronic and the more EDM kind of influences that come in there, that can really go towards more a heavier EDM style crowd, maybe potentially getting a little bit more connected with fans of Sullivan King and Sudden Death. Or you go to the metalcore style of it, which is a little bit heavier, has a little more of the crazy side to it, which gets into more of the, you know, maybe some of the heavier stuff that we like, like maybe some of the While She Sleeps, maybe, you know, Silent Planet, maybe uh, I'm trying to think of some other, you know, absolutely heavy ones that can be chaotic at the exact same time too. Uh, like, you know, even from a more of like a punk sample, like a Fever 333. But then you go the electronic side, a little bit more, more of the smoother side of it. Again, star set fans, I see stars fans can easily get into it. You go to more of the, you know, the dancey parts of it. Okay, electric cowboy fans could come in. You could get fans from more of the pop side of things because they connect with that a little bit more. And it's something where, again, you guys are expanding your ability to connect with so many other people and through those reviews with people saying, I like this song, but I like this song. No, I like this song. I like it for this aspect. I liked it for this aspect. It's showing you that you have the ability to do something like that. Yeah, you're clearly right, and I would add also that it gave us the strength to adapt really to the the stage uh, we are performing on. You know, because sometimes we maybe we we will uh, play on like a soft rock festival, you know, and then we can like really uh, rethink our set list, you know, and just play like the the yeah the momentum the colorless uh, or, or more of the stardust songs you know mm -hmm. and if we are playing like a huge metal fest then we can play the, the, the heavier stuff you know of course so it, it's also gave us like a certain versatility you know uh, we are able to to adapt somehow yeah it's pretty yeah cool. and, and with that versatility too especially in a live and i'm a huge proponent of this where you want to have that versatility because in that live setting 
you at that point in time, the only people that matter that are listening to your music in that, like when you're playing that live set, are the people that are immediately in front of you that are paying attention to the show. Yeah, there's 50 people thousands of miles away on the internet, like, oh, I like this song, but I like this song. I wish they'd do more of this. But they're not the ones that you're impacting right now. You're not the they're not the ones you're impacting right away. So if you're at a heavier festival that is playing a lot of heavier music, say you're going on stage and like the headliner that night on that stage is Bring Me the Horizon, but it's Bring Me the Horizon playing all of Suicide Season. You know, you're gonna <laughs> want to play the heavier stuff. Or if you're going to a festival and like the headliner on that stage that night is the killers, you're gonna potentially want to play some more yeah. of the softer stuff because it you're gonna want to impact that crowd and that crowd's going to drive off the energy they get from that show. That's what's going to make them want to come to the merch table, pick up a shirt, come to the merch table after the show and meet you guys. Check out Swayzion online later and check out what else you guys have to offer. It's going to be what's going to do that. So being able to curate that sales and have that versatility is such a huge thing that there's a lot of bands out there that I think, you know, they might be a little bit too specific within their sound, within their niche to be able to do that. Yeah. But if you have the ability to do that, use that to the fullest capacity that you can. Yeah, that's really our goal, man. That's really what we want to develop here, and uh, that's what we are we are still working on it. And uh, I think it's our best weapon here. And uh, you you really catch the vibe and the 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 the, the thing you, we want to develop. So yeah, this is really it. Yeah. Oh, it, it is really it. And when you guys released the infinite as well, because we're talking about you know the reviewers that kind of brought this stuff up. When you released it, what was the immediate reception from the Suasion fans? Because of course, the fans are going to be another aspect when their album drops that you want to see what they thought of it. So, what did, what was their take? Uh, overall, it was really good, but I don't I don't know. Man, something strange happened with our social medias with the COVID. I I, I have this feeling that uh, the core of our fan base wasn't really uh, aware of the the fact we released a new album. I think we we, we lost a lot of them somehow during the pandemic or so. And uh, so also we signed to Atomic Fire. So now everything is released on their YouTube channel, you know, and we had l lots of difficulties to reach them, you know, but overall the results were, 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 were okay, you know, we were good. So, but we, we, we didn't have maybe also the, the, this whole like uh, um, numeric uh, approach has changed over the time. I don't know, but now we have less uh, activity on the, the videos and stuff. So it's, it's kind of strange. So you, you can't really, uh, you can't really say it, but, then you, you you look at the streams and the the the, the result on Spotify and all the, the platforms and it's it's a tremendous uh, evolution you know so I think like people really enjoy to listen to our music but they commit less than before that's kind of strange you know so I we have we have the feeling that we have less support than before but in fact it's not really true you know but it's just that the, yeah the like the comments the the share the the stuff the activity on the social media is like. Uh, not as big as before, I think, but uh, the, the the rest is following and is evolving, you know, so it's strange. I mean, that could be for a couple of different reasons as well. One reason could be is just this isn't 2020 anymore. We're not all locked in our yeah. house and the only way to communicate yeah, yeah, cool. is through yeah, our phones right. or through online. People are able to go out and do these things. People are able to go out and talk to people, even though online presence is still such a large major thing where you know people are still gonna be happy sharing that stuff so that could be a possibility maybe with you know you guys being on atomic fire right now and just seeing how things maybe have been reorganized maybe while you guys were making this making the album and writing it recording everything maybe the social game on your end maybe took a little bit of a backdrop just so that you guys could make the best album that you possibly could there's plenty of different factors in mm -hmm. there but what ends up happening is, is, you know, you take a look at maybe, you know, the YouTube side of things and maybe the YouTube side of things aren't as good as you would hope. But then again, you take a look at Spotify and you see the songs and it's not something where, you know, you have a couple of songs, you have like, I think it was half the album, at least had a per song had over a hundred thousand streams, which is fantastic. And you're seeing the ones that are, people are listening to more and ones that people are listening to less. But overall in that aspect, it's people are still driving to that platform. People are still driving, listening to it because I, I think your guys' Spotify monthly listener count doubled or tripled from the time we did this a couple of years ago. So again, that's still a that's still a great jump. So people are still consuming your music in some way, but maybe the interaction just isn't as much for a number of different factors. However, now that you guys are have released the the music, that the videos are out there for them to consume that type of content and for them to get into the band more, and then with you guys playing more live shows, you're gonna potentially start to see that kick up once again because 
it's like the accessibility is back once again to you guys mm-hmm. in terms of the way people can connect with you. And again, you're just going to be in their minds at that point. Maybe that's a piece where there's so much being flooded in at them at one time. Maybe their brains are just, you know, pushing the suasion file a little bit further back in the drawer. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know really, but uh, as you say, I think it's a combination of a lot of different factors. And uh, and uh, yeah, but as you said, when it counts, really, it's uh, it's the streams, it's the it, it's all that that kind of stuff. And and there, there is a huge evolution. So we are really happy about it, of course. And all the the, the biggest fans we have, of course, they, they said it was a tremendous work. And uh, and uh, but we 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 thought that the the concept of the movie would would have would make a bigger impact, you know. And mm-hmm. in the end. We have noticed that uh, some song, some songs work better than others, you know. And so, yeah, they were like, "Oh, amazing music videos and stuff." But sadly, the whole thing didn't make in, didn't make enough impact. And so, I don't think enough people like interested themselves in the whole movie concept. And that's my huge regret about it because we we really wanted to develop that and make it like uh, also a weapon, you know, because it's something quite uh, original. And in the end, it wasn't really well uh, exploited, you know. And, but, all, but I'll say, but, you know, at the same time, too, if you guys wouldn't have tried that, then you wouldn't have known you wouldn't have taken that chance at the same time, too. It's it could also be looked at a way that, you know, the music is consumed in our world and in our culture today, where everything seems to be so heavily driven off of the single. Everything's so heavily driven off of streaming, off of just finding that way to get that one hook in there. So when it comes to getting an investment into something like that, it's people just don't necessarily ha- have the want or the attention span to do something like that. However, if there's a way where you guys can turn that movie, maybe, you know, again, it's going to be a 50 minute long movie to coincide with the album, but if there's a way to maybe make a little bit of an inch point, maybe cut that up and like, okay, you know, like that, like TikTok, Instagram, real YouTube short, like 30 yeah. second, 45 second little pieces. Yeah, of course. That just blow people out of the water. Now there's more of this connection point to there. There's more of this interest to there. And with TikTok being such a gigantic platform now for music discovery, if there's anything you guys can know, I mean, that might be when it comes to getting people more connected back into the whole entire story of it, the movie of it, and then continue on to grow the band and grow the overall connection to it through, you know, streams, through, you know, live shows, through ticket sales, all that kind of stuff. I'm, it, it might just be reformatting how you guys take a look at that. There's so many, it's, there's so many different reasons of why, like, you know, and issues and reasons why things are the way they are now. But it's kind of taking a look at, okay, this is the way things are now. How can we use this to the best of our ability to achieve the goals that we want to achieve? Because we can't go back to, you know, there's no going back to 2005, 2006 and (laughs) going through music the way that music was consumed back then. There's no even going back to 2019 and going back to the way music was consumed back then. It's 2023. We went through a worldwide, you know, if global event for a couple of years called a pandemic that changed pretty much everything. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was talking three years later, how you consume music, how you go through life, how I consume music, how I go through life are three are are they're all completely different now compared to where they were the last time we spoke. So there might just be something there when it comes to just re kind of retooling the whole social game and focusing in on that. There's a lot of different things you can kind of come up with and working with atomic fire as well, especially with them backing you guys, you never know. They might have a good amount of resources for this. They might have a lot of ideas for this as well and can really get that push because what I've seen, especially in the past couple of like past year, take a look at bad omens, take a look at sleep token and take a look at a band called catch your breath. They've been getting a lot more focus in on them and a lot more attention on them because the TikTok crowd end up liking a part of one of their songs. Mm, yeah, you're so right. So maybe right. Yeah, we, Atomic Fire has something in their sleeve that can maybe push that, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, people are getting more into the in the uh, whole album, <laughs> more into the whole story, more into the movie aspect, and it just you know snowballs and piles up from there. Yeah, I don't know, but we we are actively working on that too for the, the development of our TikTok page as well. Yeah. We we uh, just as you said, man. You 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 really sp- speak well. <laughs> <laughs> you really uh you really uh yeah put the the right topics on the table here. Uh yeah. So so we really adapted all the videos to have a like a TikTok format, as you said, to to open uh, the 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 band to this platform. Since now it's it's obviously the the best tool we have to to make a, a work known. So so that's that's also uh, something we are we are working on at the moment. Yeah. 
and uh, and I hope it will work uh, in a in a in really good amount in a really good way. <laughs> I, I hope it'll work, but again, you guys have a little bit of something that not many other artists have, and that is adaptability, and that all becomes adaptability with the music that you create. Again. You're not focusing in on one style. You're not focusing in on one specific sound. The core is going to have that cinematic feel to it, but whether it's going to be a heavier driving song or something that's more chaotic, that cyberpunk feel to it, or something a little bit more mellow, a little more soft, a little more flowy, a little more melodic at the same time, you have the ability to take a look at all these songs, see what you want to work with, see how it's like, okay, maybe on the TikTok side, maybe there's a piece of you know Murphy's Law that for some reason you can get something in there to just absolutely go crazy and create something manic there. Maybe there's something more a little bit later on and maybe a little bit of a softer song where all of a sudden, okay, you want to try and push them out. I want to make sure I get the song name, right? Like on Momentum, you put something out there and maybe it connects with people in a different way and it really ends up getting them more into it. Again, take a look at what Sleep Token has done this year and how much, you know, TikTok has been inspired from them. I saw someone say that Sleep Token's current music, especially with the more progressive style to it, is perfect for thought videos. I'm like, Huh. Interesting. <laughs> but it works. Maybe there's another I don't know. There's but whatever there is to get your music out there, that's the whole point that I'm trying to make here is you guys have so much adaptability because your sound is so diverse. You can try so many different things and play around with it. You have the freedom to do that. You're not put into a certain lane or a certain box you have to fit into to make sure that suasion grows the way you want it to grow. Yeah, yeah, so you you're completely right. Yeah, it's uh it's the really the 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 direction we want to take. So we uh, we we are going to work on it. Yeah, to to make it a bigger and bigger and bigger, and soon to to be able to play in the US. <laughs> this would be the dream, of course. So that's how I'm gonna know what's gonna happen when you guys, you know, when it comes to persuasion, when it finally that that moment is hit, is when I get to see. In 2024, I'm going to call it right now. In 2024, I'm going to be sitting here. I'm going to be working on podcast stuff, kicking ass, taking names. All of a sudden, I'm going to get this like press release from something that says has this major tour with a lot of support from European acts. I'll be like, oh, cool. And I'm going to look down the line. And I'm going to see the <laughs> name Swage in there. And what I'll do in that instance is three things. One, I'll probably do a spit take as like a wait, what? Did I am actually seeing this right? And then take whatever bottle that I was or cup I was drinking up, throw it at the wall, yell, fuck yeah, send you an email and just have it say, fuck yeah, this is happening. And then I'll just send you the like the tour page and I'll probably circle the show that I'm playing and going to be like, it's happening right now. <laughs> oh, man, I hope you're right. <laughs> this would be huge. But first Europe and then, yeah, uh, we, we hope to we hope to do that. Yeah, this, this would be really awesome. Actually, I think it would be a first for a, a metal Ben from Belgium to tour the US. I don't think it's ever been done before. So this would be quite uh, quite something, yeah, to achieve. That would be quite the feat. Let's make it happen, everybody. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, please. But let's make it happen. <laughs> let's make it happen. Let's get all excited for it and let's do it. Well, Stephen, as we bring this podcast to its conclusion, one thing I'd like to do, we did the last time we're doing it again, is give you, which is my guest, a chance to say whatever you want to say, plug whatever you want to plug, promote whatever you want to promote at the end of the podcast. So my friend, the floor is yours. Well, I just want to thank everybody, of course, especially from the the US, since uh, just as I've said during the interview, you you guys are, are listening to us like you're, you're, you're really crazy about uh, our music. And uh, we, it's really something special for a small band from Belgium like us to to being able to reach that amount of people in, in your country. The, you, you you don't imagine what uh, what impact has the, the fact to be listened to uh, to be to have your work listened to in uh, in the US for a band from Europe and, and and also from Belgium. So thank you for that. Really, we really want to to meet you all. Uh, our, our best fans are clearly in the US. So uh, the, the 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 people which are uh, talking with talking with us the most and sharing their opinion and stuff, they're all from the US. So this is this is really something we want to do, and we really hope to to see you there soon uh we i invite you of uh, of course to to uh, to discover our new album uh with the cinematic experience because this is really something we've been working on for really seriously and deeply uh, for more than a year so uh, this will be the, the 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 biggest respect you could give to our work and uh, and i hope you will enjoy the ride and the trip if you're a sci-fi uh, enthusiast of course you will enjoy the ride <laughs> and that would be all thank you again and thanks to you for um letting me uh, speak today and to yeah, give uh, more uh, 
more uh, information about the the band and the yeah our background and stuff thank you oh, very much for that absolutely it's my pleasure to have you now it's time for you this podcast with three specific things so first things first when it comes to swage and yes the infinite is out now for you guys to go check out and you're going to want to see that cinematic experience. I'm saying it right now. Go and do it. Go and watch videos. Take part of the whole entire experience and really get the full immersive style of it. So what, how do you want to do this? You're going to want to go and follow Swayzion on whatever you can on social media in order to continue that engagement. Build it up. Yes. <laughs> if I can just add all the links to, to the cinematic experience you can find in our bios on Instagram, on Facebook, on all the social media. So you 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 will find all the links you need to be to to uh, get yourself on uh, YouTube and have the have the full thing for you at your disposal. <laughs> you know where else you can find them? In the description of this podcast. So go below, we'll say find Swage Online. There'll be links and labels for the social media for each where you can watch all the videos for the that cinematic experience where you can connect them online, where you can find out where they're playing next, where you can buy some merch to support the band and where you can stream their music as well to really help them out. If you're in the US, definitely do it. If you're all around the world, definitely do it too. Because, well, everyone should be doing this. I, 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 that's what I'm saying. So now it's time for number two. Steven, the last time I had you on the podcast, I said the first time I would get to see you play live, my promise was going to be that the first round's on me. Well, it's three years later. We're doing this again, but I haven't seen you play live yet. So it's no longer first round's on me. It's first two. Oh, man. Woo. No, I definitely We're have to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say we're up in it. And, th and this will either be if you guys are able to come over to the U.S. or because I badly, badly, badly want to get over to ba back over to Europe. But, of course, you know, pandemic and then money kind of became an issue. I really want to make it back there in 2024. So if I do, I will look for a place and a time where Suasion is playing. I'll show up to the show and they'll be like, who the heck is the crazy guy in, in the baseball cap in the pit? This makes no sense. Did Kevin actually and if you show do, up at our show? It'll be like, yeah, and, hey guys. And if you do, just tell us so we so we can give you a ticket and uh, and VIP entrance and all the all, everything that you need. And you also, uh, uh, we will offer you a bunch of good Belgian beer. <laughs> oh, I cannot say no to that. You know me, man. I love beer. So, ooh, that, yes. And Belgian beers are the best in the world, so you, I, I'm sure you won't be disappointed here. <laughs> That's the only thing we do well. <laughs> I'm not even going to argue with you on that with, point. <laughs> with, with electronic metal co with uh, EDM influences. <laughs> <laughs> Beer and suede and what Belgium does best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This would For, be our this this should be our country motos now. <laughs> yeah, but beer and beer and suasion. Beer and suasion. <laughs> the perfect motto. Well, Stephen, as we bring this to a conclusion, I cannot end this by saying goodbye because this is your second time on the podcast. Do I want to be back on the podcast again in the future? Yes. Do I have a promise to keep to you? Yes. So this cannot be goodbye. That's too final. So my friend, this is. I'll see you later. I see you later. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, well, folks, that was my interview with Steven from the band Suasion out of Belgium. And now it's time for Kevin's final thought. Where do I go with my final thought in this one? At the end of the episode, one thing that Steven had said was like when it came to the introduction of Suasion, if you're trying to get into him, this podcast is the perfect one to do it, especially from Infinite, because we talk about the band's style. We talk about the band's making of Infinite. We talk about the cinematic idea behind it. We also talk about many other things as well. And it's something that I'm really, really proud of that we did. But the thing that I really want to go with my final thought too is, is when you take a look at what I would call the band's adaptability. And we talked about this with the fact that their cinematic idea is at the core of their sound. They have that metalcore, you know, base to it, but they can go more of the rocks and they can go more of the EDM style. They can go all over the place. So you can go with a much softer song, a more melodic song, or go heavy chaotic cyberpunk at the same time too, but have that grand cinematic feel to it, which allows them to connect with so many different audiences. When we were talking with Steven about those reviews that they had gotten, and the reviews were mixed on what songs everyone liked and why everyone liked it in a different way, it's because this album can touch on so many different things and allows them to be that dynamic and be that ever-present in terms of adapting to whatever audience they're trying to connect with, whether it's a specific audience or a specific 
specific genre, whether it's a specific audience in a live setting connecting to the music that's also being played at that show, whether it's something that's softer, whether it's something that's heavier and more chaotic, they are able to do that. So they're able to create that experience that fans can connect with. And their cinematic experience with The Infinite that you can watch on YouTube is going to bring you to that. So the adaptability key for this band is incredibly important. They know the U.S. is a major market for them. They're going to want to get there any way they can. And let's make sure they do. I want to support these guys. Let's make sure they do. I mean, we've supported them for years, and we're going to continue to support them once again, and we want you to too. So how can you support Suasion? You're going to go to the description of this podcast where it says Find Suasion Online. Links and labels for everything for socials, where you can watch the cinematic experience of the Infinite album, where you can stream their music, where you can find them online, buy some merch and support them. It'll be under Find Suasion Online. Link description of the podcast. Also, make sure you follow along with us on the Corporate Rush Podcast Facebook we're getting back on Twitter a little bit and Instagram said bye-bye to TikTok. We gave it the boot. Yeah, we gave it the boot. So connect with us on there, like, and follow our pages, you know, become a fan of the core progression podcast. Join us on our Instagram live streams every single Wednesday night, at 9 PM central. On top of that, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to Spotify podcast, I heard you on Amazon, hit that follow or subscribe button as well. Become a full follower and subscriber to the core progression podcast. Really show us that love. And I want to thank you for doing that as well. Truly. Cause this is what I want to do with my life. I want to bring great music to so many different rock and metal fans, especially the young ones. That's the next generation. Want to help you guys discover new music, feel your desire to connect with a lot of people that also love the same kind of music that you do and feel accepted in the best community that there is the rock and metal family. So Yep, if you're feeling like, I want to be a part of that, hit that subscribe button, baby. Also want to thank Phoenix Fitness for sponsoring this podcast. Remember, 20% off use the code CPP20 at fnxfit.com. Link description of the podcast. Thank you, Stephen from Suasion. Three years in the making. We did it again. Not wait another three years to do something like this. Want to do another one with them again soon enough. So on that note, that's going to be for today, guys. Thank you for watching listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I am. Every single one of the big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah!